Are you tired of DVD's terrible range of graphics options? What about the lack of a crosshair for your favorite ranged killer? Well, this is the Dead by Daylight Companion, a project being worked on by me to assist with these shortcomings in the game we all love to hate. So what is the DVD Companion? Well, it's a lot of things, or it will be, it's just not finished yet. But as a short explanation before we dive deeper into things, the DVD Companion is a collection of tools to help improve your Dead by Daylight experience. It's a project I've been working on for the last three months because I noticed the game's lackluster quality of life when it came to some of these highly requested features. Before we go any further, I do want to say immediately that this is entirely safe to use in every sense of the word. Nothing will ever be added to this project that can impose a risk of a ban, and I've personally tested every feature as I create them to ensure this. All the code for this project is also available on my GitHub, the link for that is in the description in case anyone is curious. Now we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the companion. So you might be asking, well, how do I install this? And it's pretty simple, actually. Just head over to the first link in the description, which will take you to the releases page on GitHub. From there, find the latest version. At the time of writing this, it's 0.6, so I'm gonna click this one. Once downloaded, open up the 7-zip and drag the folder onto your desktop or anywhere you prefer. You can now open that folder and double-click dbdc.exe. And now that we've installed and opened the application, let's go through the features. Upon opening the companion and seeing the home screen, you'll immediately notice the Shriner secrets. The reset timer tells you when the shrine is going to reset and is more precise than the one in-game. Once the timer reaches zero and the shrine has been refreshed, you'll automatically see the new shrine in the menu. Hovering over any of the perk names will give you the perks descriptions for every tier of the perk. Short and simple, but there's not really much else to talk about there. But let's move on to the config editor. Now as a quick disclaimer, the config editor only supports the Steam version of Dead by Daylight at the moment. I haven't added support for Epic Games, but I am looking into it and working on it. If you'd like an update when it becomes supported, you can join the Discord with the link in the description to get pinged when the companion has an update. And let me be clear, it's only the config editor that doesn't work on the Epic Games version. Everything else featured in this video will work. Now to open the config editor, simply click this menu button at the top and click on config editor. Now that the config editor is open, you'll be met with a wide selection of settings which may look intimidating at first, but trust me, it's easy. On the left, we have our main graphics quality options such as view distance, shadows and textures. Clicking on any of these boxes will allow you to select a setting from very low all the way to ultra. Simply click your preference and the companion will automatically save it and be ready for the next time you start Dead by Daylight. Holding right click on any option will also display information about it to help you make a choice. Some options even have pictures to help you make a better choice. Moving on to the middle row, we have all the extra rendering settings including things like your resolution, FPS limit, V-Sync, anti-aliasing and motion blur. Over on the right, we have a few different sections here. In MISC, we have your killer FOV, but we also have two of my favorite features in the config editor. Remove intro cutscene and skip news pop-up. Enabling the first will entirely skip the cutscene that plays when you open your game. The second skipping the news pop-up once you reach the main menu of DVD. We also have a sensitivity slider, and you may be thinking, well, DVD already has a sensitivity slider in game. And you'd be right. The DVD limits you to intervals of 5%, whereas the companion lets you choose any percentage which I've found extremely useful. And the last part is just a small accessibility section for some settings people might find useful. One thing to note is that for some of these settings to work, the companion needs to set your config files to read only so that the game doesn't automatically reset them. The side effect of this is that after you edit your config in the companion, any settings you change in game will be reverted to the companion's value after the game is closed. If you'd like to undo this, keeping in mind some companion settings might not work until you re-enable them, you can click on open folder at the top here, right click game user settings, and hit properties. Once you've done that, you can untick this little read only box at the bottom of the pop-up, click apply, then OK, and you're done. One last pretty cool feature of the config editor is the copy and import settings buttons. Clicking copy will copy a big string of letters and numbers to your clipboard that you can send to anyone you'd like who also uses the companion. They can copy it, then click on import settings and it will automatically import and apply every single one of your settings to their game. Also this restart game button will immediately close and reopen your game if you press it, which is good if someone brings a map that you don't want to play. And now moving on to the crosshair menu. We can click this menu button up at the top and go to crosshair menu. Once we're here, you'll notice everything is greyed out. Simply click the enable checkbox so we can start configuring. Starting off again on the left, we have lines. Enabling it will immediately show a crosshair in the middle of your screen, but you'll now notice that all the options under the one we just clicked are now available. To the right of the checkbox, we now have a color box you can click to choose your own crosshair color. Clicking on lines, you can enable or disable specific lines to create your own style. You can also adjust the length, thickness, and gap of the crosshair. 
You can also choose whether or not you want an outline around the crosshair as well as its color and thickness. One thing to note is that you can hold control on your keyboard and left click any of the sliders to input a custom value, allowing you to create some wild settings. Now we have the middle section and starting off is the center dot. Enabling it will show a small circle with some extra settings you can configure, such as whether or not the circle is filled or not, the size of the circle, as well as the amount of segments which decides how smooth the circle is. The less segments, the more jagged it becomes. Something that may look complicated, but it's actually pretty simple, is the center point section. The section allows you to move where on the screen the crosshair is shown using either the sliders, individual incrementing, or resetting it entirely. We also have my favorite section in the whole menu, the dynamic killer crosshair. Now this is cool because enabling this option will auto adjust your crosshair based on which killer you have set. Now it doesn't support every killer, but you can definitely expect more in the future. You can also save any profiles you create with the profile section. Typing in any name and pressing create will cause your profile to appear in the box at the top. Clicking it will load it. Now you can set up your profile how you want and once you're done, simply click save. If you've already set up your settings before creating a profile, you can simply click save once you've created it. If for any reason you're not happy with your profile and want to start fresh, you can click reset current profile and watch everything return to default settings, or you can outright delete the profile entirely. And that's pretty much everything as far as current features go. I've got a lot of things planned for the future of this project, such as a hook tracker to track the amount of times each survivor has been hooked, a perk packager to make creating custom perk packs extremely simple, on-screen timers for DS, off the record, BT, etc, and much more. If you want updates on the progress of things like this, you can join the Discord where I ping specific roles based on what I'm working on. This project is still in early access, but I've set it up to be easily updated, so if you have any ideas for features or suggestions, let me know down in the comment section. I'm really excited and passionate about this, so it'd be great to hear your opinion on it all. But other than that, that's really all I have for today. Like, comment, sub, all that jazz, and I'll see you whenever. Later.